The world of Elden Ring is teeming with monsters and enemies ready to destroy our tarnish at every turn. We learn this very quickly during our first encounter with the grafted Scion, the introductory boss meant to show us how punishing death can be. Of course, after losing this fight, we find ourselves in the tutorial area of the game, where we're taught the basics of survival. After emerging from that cave, we are met with another seemingly insurmountable challenge. A large, golden-clad knight riding an armored steed, holding a halberd and shield larger than our tarnished. We quickly learn that battle may not be our best option, and oftentimes we're forced to run from this formidable foe. We encounter tree sentinels in a few different areas of the lands between, but who are they? Why do they seem to be patrolling areas our tarnished absolutely needs to pass through in order to reach the Ur tree? And from where do they draw their incredible strength? Let's dive in. Before we go any further, we want to make a quick shout out to Pat G, who has been creating the incredible artwork for our video thumbnails. Make sure to check out his store linked in the description if you'd like to bring home any of these prints for yourself, or as a gift for the Elden Ring fan in your life. The first place we need to look for information on the Tree Sentinels is their armor set. Every piece of this set is described as the armor of the heavy cavalry Tree Sentinels who serve the Erd Tree. Imposingly sturdy and nigh unbreakable, the grace of old yet lingers. The chest piece of the armor is also adorned with a cape featuring the mark of the sacred tree. These armor pieces imply that the tree sentinels may not serve a specific ruler such as Marika or Godric, but the Ur tree itself. The Ur tree great shield also tells us the tree sentinels are the living rampart of the Ur tree. The tree sentinels are the standard by which all defenders of the Ur tree aspire. So any knight who serves the Ur tree look at becoming a sentinel as their ultimate goal. This information applies to all tree sentinels, but we learn after making our way to Leyndel that there is another variation of this knight, the Draconic Tree Sentinel. One of these enemies can drop the malformed dragon set, which explains how these sentinels came to wield the power of dragons. Each piece of armor is described as malformed and is adorned with various dragon imagery and worn by the misshapen tree sentinels. After the great ancient dragon Grand Sax attacked, the sentinels had an epiphany. The only way to truly protect the Ur tree was to become dragons themselves. When Grand Sax attacked the royal capital, he brought down the walls of Leyndale. This was the first time in recorded history these walls had ever been breached, and this started the war against the dragons. Various items throughout Elden Ring unravel the story of the war with the dragons, but in order to stay focused on the draconic tree sentinels, we won't dig into this. Yet. The Draconic Tree Sentinels wield incredible power, and the reason for this is because they have most likely engaged in Dragon Communion. Their malformed armor bears dragon ornamentation and reinforces the connection between their power and that of dragons. These Sentinels were already the strongest defenders of the Ur Tree, and in order to defend it from any and all threats, they took the power of the dragons for themselves. We can see the outcome of their communion with the magics these sentinels wield, but they also became dragons in a less literal sense, by taking trophies from those they slayed for their communion and fashioning them into equipment. The dragon Great Claw is said to have been whittled from the claw of a great ancient dragon, wielded by grotesque tree sentinels who yet serve the earth tree. The claw is enwreathed with lightning and tears through the dragon's feeble descendants with ease. Again, we see how these sentinels fashion themselves into a force capable of slaying dragons to protect the Earth Tree. However, the item description also says they yet serve the Earth Tree, implying that eventually, their dabbling in dragon communion could someday pull them away from their purpose. Now that we know who the tree sentinels are and where they draw their power from, the question remains, why do we continually find them obstructing our path to the Earth Tree? Unlike other boss enemies in Elden Ring, we only find the sentinels in areas meant to halt our progression to our main goal. We believe this is intentional not from a game design standpoint, but from a lore perspective. The first tree sentinel we discover is immediately after we emerge into Limgrave. We can assume that most, if not all tarnished, start in this same area, as Var waits here to see what new tarnished he may be able to recruit to his cause. 
This means that the Tree Sentinel is likely to do battle with all of these new Tarnished as well. The Sentinels have dedicated themselves to the Earth Tree. They are its rampart, and their goal is to destroy all who threaten it. After defeating Morgoth, we learn that in order to become Elden Lord, we must burn the Erd Tree, and we believe it's likely that the Tree Sentinels, being the Erd Tree's closest defenders, know this as well. This is why one of their order is stationed immediately outside of the area where Tarnished emerge into the lands between, to destroy them, shake their resolve, and dissuade them from following grace. Again, we find two Tree Sentinels on the road to Landell, they stand in front of a large doorway that leads to the road that will take us into the city. They attack as a team, trying to prevent us from making our way to the foot of the Earth Tree, and are a formidable force to battle at the same time. Should we keep following this road, we reach the entrance to the city, this time defended by a Draconic Tree Sentinel, the strongest of their order we have faced up to this point. Only by defeating him do we make our way into the city. The next idea is only a theory, but we know thanks to the Magma Breath incantation that Dragon Communion can turn a person into a Magma Wyrm if abused. Those who have performed the Dragon Communion will find their humanity slowly slipping away. Once they fully succumb to their fate, they are left no more than Wyrms that crawl the earth. If we climb the scaffolding from Raya Lucaria to Landell, we face Magma Wyrm Makar. Makar will drop the Magma Wyrm Scale Sword if defeated, which tells us, It's said these land-bound dragons were once human heroes who partook in Dragon Communion, a grave transgression, for which they were cursed to crawl the earth upon their bellies, shadows of their former selves. It would make sense that a Draconic Tree Sentinel would have been protecting a secret passage to the Altus Plateau. And the Magma Wyrm Scale Sword is another blade made from the remains of a dragon, just like the Dragon Great Claw. There's no solid evidence that Makar used to be a Draconic Tree Sentinel, but the lore around these monsters does make it seem plausible. There is one more Draconic Tree Sentinel we can face in crumbling Farah Mazula. They guard the entrance to Malakath's boss room, and again, display an impressive strength that is not easily defeated, even by the most formidable Tarnished. The fact that there is a sentinel guarding this area reinforces the idea that these knights know that the greatest threat to the Erd Tree is a tarnished chasing the title of Elden Lord. As we attempt to burn the Erd Tree, we are teleported to crumbling Farah Mazula, and from here, the only way to escape is by defeating Malakath, the Black Blade, and unbinding Destined Death. Enya tells us when asked about burning the Erd Tree that, for the flame to burn the Erd Tree, a sacrifice is needed of one who envisions the flame and can lead you to the Rune of Death. And the Finger Maiden Crone at the Grand Lift of Roll tells us, The burning of the Erd Tree is the first cardinal sin. Doing so will unbind destined death and slay the world itself. Both of these dialogues imply it is not enough to kindle the tree. The flame will not take hold until we unbind destined death and we can only do that by getting past this final Draconic Tree Sentinel and facing Malekith. The Tree Sentinel's purpose, first and foremost, is to defend the Erd Tree. These knights understand that the greatest threat to the tree is us, the Tarnished, those who wish to rip the title of Elden Lord away from Radagon, and can only do so by destroying the Erd Tree. They try to stop us at every milestone along the way, but if we are persistent, we can overcome them and surpass their power. We hope you learned something new about the Tree Sentinels from this dive into their lore. Feel free to comment with any other theories you may have about this Order of Knights. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next video on the Black Knife Assassins. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.